This is uh, Access Street Preacher, with Philip Ness Thomas of Toronto. Every man is worthy of his labor. Immortals. It's, uh, his YouTube is One Righteousness. Yeah. The ministry is called Servanthood, so that's just the name. And uh, we're talking about the craziness factor of being on the street. And, um... Yeah, we're talking about craziness. You know, like, the Bible says in Hosea 9, 7, the, to the wicked, people who are not following God, could be a, a professing Christian too, or a heathen, the spiritual man is crazy and the prophet is insane. And it also says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the earthly man cannot discern the things of the spirit unless he is born of the spirit. Neither can they judge, it says and goes on to say in 15, because only the spiritual man judges all things and a spiritual man is dead to his flesh for the most part. He doesn't live for himself, doesn't go to things of the world and stuff like that. But, you know, when people think we're crazy or Christians, especially Israelites who are the biggest hypocrites and hecklers from the stands because they're not on the field, they love to criticize us and ask us, you know, what, you know, say this isn't profitable, what you're doing. But you know, Lady Gaga is crazy. She does stupid things like dressing up in a meat suit and looking like a total retard. And yet, nobody really criticizes her. You don't see those Christians calling her out because they're hypocrites. They can't judge. They're living in the flesh still. You know, most of them have been deceived by the false bride, and that's why Jesus says in Revelation 18, come out from among her, be separate, says, says the Lord, be not partakers of her sins, of their ignorances. So there's a massive false bride that dominates, that sits on many waters, Revelation 17, 15, and she blinds most people uh, and falsely converts most professing Christians uh, as being in Christ when they pervert, they pervert the the faith of walking after Christ and what it really means, what it looks like. They turn it into a big box store. See, we think outside the box. We, 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 our faith can't be contained by a box on Sundays. You know, all this weekend is Good Good Friday weekend, and even that's wrong. Like, I mean, if you read, you're reading today in, in uh, was it Exodus? God says, you know, for the Passover, you're supposed to start on the seventh day, which would be tonight, because today is the sixth. So the Jewish calendar, they would start on the, the evening until the next evening would be a day. So tonight is a, would be the seventh by the Jewish calendar, and they would not eat any any uh, leavened bread, and they would continue to do so until the 14th, and on the 10th day, they would pick a lamb, spotless and blameless, perfect lamb. So it was really a tough sacrifice to give. And then they would kill the sacrifice and eat of it on the 14th and put the blood on the doorposts as a symbol that... Uh, God overlooks our sin because he shed his blood and we took the plea bargain. We got our name signed in the plea bargain, the Lamb's Book of Life. And then uh, you go another seven days and uh, until the 21st day and then you can, if you have, if you want to, you can start eating leavened bread again. But anyways, that's a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm going off topic. The reality is... How many people actually think, how many, how many people hear your message? How many people actually uh, take it? Everybody hears it, but it's up to them to do it. Something with it, you know. We just are out. Every, you know, you walk around in, in your neighborhood, your city. You'll see billboards advertising this and that. Well, we're a living, breathing billboard. We're constantly just advertising Jesus, marketing Jesus. Like uh, Luke seven twenty three says, uh, "What do I liken to this generation?" Or sorry, thirty one thirty two says, "What do I liken unto this generation?" They are there in the marketplace singing and piping. That's what we're doing. We got big speakers on the gospel bill. You can see right there. Show them. Right there. Big speakers, and we go around and we just uh, give the little nuggets of truth, little gospel to go, get them thinking about God and about their life. Because most people are in the delusion that Satan sets up the matrix where they keep procrastinating because they're so busy with other stuff, finite earthly things that will pass away, and yesterday's fa they'll become yesterday's fads. And they're, they're too busy with those things in their head, swirling around their head, that nobody's bringing the sword to really cut through that that helmet of, um, of lies that needs to be cut through with the sword to put a helmet of salvation on. You know, and they're, they're not thinking about that their life is finite, that they're going to die, and that they're living really for tr trivial pursuits and things that won't even matter when they stand before God and are judged. What do you say to people that, that say that you, by yelling at them, you're just turning them off to God? 
Yeah, well, those are usually hypocrites from Christian dumb because they themselves can't judge, but then they sure get haughty in their false religion and their false authority. Uh, and they, they come around and start telling you, like the Pharisees, that that's not how God works or how God moves or whatever. Some, something that suits them because at the same time, they're also convicted deep down inside that they're not really representing Christ. Their, their representation of Christ is on Sunday hanging out with their friends and they might do a, a, a formal, some kind of a informal outreach uh, once a year if that. Uh, but I grew up in Christianity so I know I, I've been through Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. You know we have to actually rebuke a church down the street here in a couple weeks uh, for having a Super Bowl party and a health and body show in the, in the sanctuary which was a representation of the Holy of Holies and if God was here today and God uh, uh, you know, God would destroy that that place, and He would. You know, they don't read the Old Testament. They don't. They don't see that God never changed. That He gets angry. He cuts people off. He takes His unfailing love and mercy away from people. That's Je Jeremiah 16. And those people are, are actually uh, the Israelites who never cross over in the Promised Land. You know, the Bible says only a remnant of Israel be saved. But then Paul says all of Israel be saved because the first Israel that uh, Paul is talking about is is the the uh, Israel by name. They confess that Jesus is their Savior. They're, they're Christians, or that's what they're titled today, Messiahites. But you know, uh, then there's the the real Israel is the ones that actually did what Jesus said, like the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. Virgins, five foolish virgins knew Jesus was Lord. They never made him Lord, and they, therefore they had no oil. You know, they had no oil to go out and preach and the spirit of God was not upon them to with boldness to preach uh, you know and they were hypocrites so talk talk about your signs and your shirts why do you use signs and shirts because it's marketing man everything advertising speaks you know we need to be careful and really take it before the Lord what it, the Bible says to acknowledge God in all your ways so in every way you acknowledge God and you look at the shirt that you made and, you know does it really define the heart of God and what God is trying to get through to people God loves us he has compassion on the, the crowds but at the same time, if God needs to, and there's someone with a haughty spirit, God will, to save them, God will rebuke them and uh, bring the bring the sword heavily instead of just like a scalpel. Sometimes we bring the, the word of God like a scalpel uh, to the meek and, the, and those who will listen and the submissive, like the spirit of God is upon me in Isaiah 61. Preach good news to the meek or the submissive, to those who will listen. But sometimes we gotta bring the ax to the root for the Israelites that, that get haughty and think that they already know God. And they, they're really just as selfish as, and more selfish than the wicked or the heathens of the world because the heathens don't even know better. They're actually cold. They don't even know anything at all because those Israelites never told them they were living for themselves. Too busy living for themselves like the world, just claiming the name. The Bible says anybody who names the name of Jesus in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 19, uh, must depart from lawlessness, from iniquity. And lawlessness is to have the truth and not share it with people, not tell people the truth. So, you know, that's what we're doing. You know, there's nothing I'd rather do today than go and love on some people. It's a little awkward. It's it's like climbing the roof of a house. It's a little scary, but the more you do it consistently, it becomes your lifestyle. I remember when we went to through the States in July last year, 2010, with a couple brothers and sisters, Nick Bovitz, uh, Ryan Griffiths, Adam DeSanti, and Sister Courtney Camp, and, and man, I, because that whole month was dedicated to God, I just got into the mode. I was preaching everywhere I went, grocery store, McDonald's, uh, gas station, everywhere I went, I was just like, I, you know, because you get into the burden. I'd love to do full-time evangelism too, if uh, I could, but you know, I, every man is worthy of his, his labor, so I got to work too, and I, I, I strongly believe in that. So, What would you say that the core of your message is on the streets? Uh, you know, there's so many different ways to angle it, but the really thing is it just comes down to repent. You know, you have violated God's holy law. God set you up, if you really want to argue it. Technically, yeah, God set you up um, to sin, to fall into sin. He left you, and He didn't make you perfect in the sense of sinless like He is, but the whole point was to test your heart. He hasn't abandoned you. He's left you His word. Just like a dad tells his son, this is what I want you to do. This is how you can... Uh, continue to live and dwell with me in my house, or uh, you know, we don't we don't mean a physical house, we mean a spiritual house, eternal, eternal life, and so you just be baptized in the life of Christ, and you will please God because God came as a son to show us how to please Him, how to live for Him, and what 
you know, and, he, and he's testing us because you, every, every smart investor tests their product. They don't just go, and they, you know, if you want to buy a new car, you're going to test it. The Bible says we're like a vessel, so the car is a vessel. It's meant to carry things. And so we're meant to carry the word of God. We're guardians of the name of Jesus and the character of Jesus. And Satan is working overtime to pervert the name of Jesus everywhere through false Israelites and, and the wicked of the world. You know? So fear God and obey him and you'll get smart. Thanks for sharing, Brother Phil. This has been Astro Street Preacher.